Welcome to Black Cat Crafts. Our project today is this. We're going to paint this 3D mini of a fantastic fantasy plant. We're going with a toxic poison theme. So that was part of our overall design. So it'll be design as well as how to get the effect, including the low lights, the brightness and the highlights. I think it looks fantastic. Let's get started. This video is designed to be very basic. It's for people who are new to miniature painting, for people who don't consider themselves artistic. So it's going to cover all the basics. That means if you are an expert, if you've been painting minis, you're probably gonna find this really boring. So our goal is what you see on screen. We're going to paint the red pear-shaped toxic plant. As I mentioned a little earlier, it came as part of a four set series. So these were all 3D printed. Now your experts will have you maybe use some sandpaper, use a sharp knife and, and take down all the ridges. But because this is a basic video, we'll look at different ways to get around that. So step one, just changing gears is about planning. So as you saw on screen there, I took a picture and then actually did a mock-up of what I wanted my colors to be. Think about your design. What colors are the buildings? What colors are the plants that you have? And what do you wanna emphasize? Do you want these plants to stick out or do you want them to complement what you already have? The colors you choose will enable you to do those goals. So in my case, I chose uh, pink and purple for the first plant, but this plant is shades of reds and greens because there aren't a lot of those in my Halloween village, particularly around where all the plants are. I wanted them to stick out, so that was my thought there. I wanted to use pure colors as well. I wanted them vibrant, and that was another strategy. If you're using colors with gray in them that are or, or browns that are a little dingy looking, those work really well in kind of a toxic wasteland. Um, you know, abandoned miniatures tends to use a lot of those, um, but for me, I wanted pure colors. And that's what you see on screen, nice pure colors. So step two, talks about the basics. As I mentioned a little earlier, there is prep that you can do for your, your minis, but because this is a beginner channel, the prep that we're going to do will be around removing any pieces, any artifacts from the 3D printing process that are obviously not right, um, and you just use a sharp knife for that. And then from there, we'll use layers of paint to deal with the ridges that you see on screen. Those little ridges are, are part of the 3D printing process. So when we 3D print things, of course, it's layers of product. And if this were people, you might want to remove those. But let's face it, these are fantasy plants and we can get away with doing some shortcuts. So many layers, in this case, of black paint. So the next step after you've got them painted like you like, is to start painting some of the design. So I'm starting in the middle. This paint here is a green paint mixed with white, and I did that on purpose. So the black itself I chose because it was inexpensive. I, I, I knew it was great coverage, I knew it was good paint, um, but unfortunately it doesn't make the best base for a vibrant color. So if you're doing you know, a nuclear disaster, everything's covered in dirt. This might be a great base color. Unfortunately for me, it wasn't so good here. So I ended up doing multiple layers of paint. So it's not going on real thick right now by design. It is a somewhat watery paint. I don't want to fill in the lines, the, des the actual design, whereas I do want to fill in the horizontal ridges. So. I tweaked the mix of water and paint here to help achieve my goals. This did require multiple layers of paint with dry times in between to get a nice, solid, vibrant base color. Now let's talk about the color I chose. 
this shade of green is what we would call a midtone. And if you haven't studied art and you're not familiar with graphic design, um, a midtone is a middle tone midtone. Um, it's the middle shade of green that I'm going to pick in my final design. So there will be shades that are darker and shades that are lighter in the final. Once I've got those design pieces in, uh, the, the green pieces in, now I'm going to go back and, and paint on the red. You could start with red and then go green. There is, in my mind, no right or wrong answer here. It just felt easier to me to do the inset pieces and then do the pieces that were that were closer to me or that were outside. And I do make mistakes like everybody and the way to fix a mistake is just with the wet paintbrush and because that green paint is dry it wipes right off on my hand. <laughs> I could have used a towel but I used my hand instead. And there you go. Mistakes will happen and that's okay. Give yourself some patience and it'll, it'll all be fine. So continue to layer the paint. Again, it is um, a thin paint by design so it fills in those ridges without adding, adding any new texture to the piece. We will be doing several layers of the red and I will be coming back with the paintbrush to smooth out the, the lumps and the lines. I wanted to give it a chance to settle before I did that. So one of the strategies that I'm using is, is setting the paintbrush on the piece very gently. Um, I use a different method when I'm painting a wall. So if, again, you know, if you're new to painting, um, painting your house, Painting a piece of furniture is, is very different from the strategies you use to paint a miniature. This is more about control of the brush and the pressure you're putting on the, the brush itself, the bristles. Um, you'll learn over time, so give yourself opportunity to learn. Again, the fantasy pieces are great first pieces to do because there is no right answer. You're not copying a, a piece from a show or, or um, a book where the author has described the, um, the, the fauna, the vegetation. Um, oops, that was flora. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> um, but anyhow, you know, it, it really is a great way to get your foot in the door of miniature painting to learn some of the techniques around how to layer color how that looks, how to use the brush, when to dilute the paint and when not to, when to use white, when to use black, and then overall planning and design. Um, you, you can just stick paint on a piece and have it look fantastic, but um, for me, I like to plan ahead because it allows me to visualize it in the space in a very real way. So the next step in our project is step four, and that is once our piece is painted and we're really happy with the, again, mid-tone color. So that was the middle red, the middle green. And now we're adding highlights and lowlights. So you can see the green that I'm doing there is a very light green. It is mixed with white, so it's very opaque. I did not add much water to it. So it's a thicker paint and I'm having to be very careful about how much I put on so I don't add texture to the piece that's not already there. Thinking about where the brightest light hits your piece will tell you where to put your highlights in most cases. Yes, advanced painters will use highlights and lowlights to create drama and to create effects that perhaps aren't in the plastic itself, weren't part of the original design. Those are expert techniques. This is more basic. So if you imagine the sun at noon shining down on your piece or the light from above shining down, all the pieces that um, are touched by the light are the brightest spots. Contrasting that, the pieces that are underneath, that are the darkest, that's where our low lights will go later. So once we have those highlights in, 
will continue to touch up the piece so I will um, fix some of those spots where I didn't quite get the paint all the way in continue to move the paint around as the paint dries it becomes easier to blend and that is another benefit of not adding a ton of water to the highlight step it dries very quickly so if you are comfortable and you move fast you're able to add um, different colors to it without actually adding more colors because you're you're pushing the paint around and you're um, well, blending it into a darker color to make a third color. So at this point, you just saw me fix another mistake. Um, we're all human, we all make mistakes, and you'll see that throughout my videos. I don't edit those out. I like to include them to show you how to fix them. In this case, that bright red was easily fixed by adding in the green with that white in it. So there you go, we're starting to get more bright color it's really starting to look good. I'm adding, now that it's dry, adding another layer of the brightest green paint to the high spots. And we'll continue to build that to add very subtle drama to the piece to make it just have that something special. That's for me, that's what the highlighting the highlights and adding in low lights does. It just takes a great piece and makes it extra. So the same process that I did below, I will continue to do on this part here. And you'll notice that most of this being so high is going to be the lighter green and if the lighter green goes a little bit too far south, that's okay. Later on, I'm going to come back with a darker green and we'll do the same process with that, just in reverse to blend it. What looks really nice here is that some of that, the, the little ridges that I didn't totally get out with the priming process are being filled in with this, this thicker paint. Um, so it really gives me a nice uniform finish, but I didn't mind the, the the ridges. I, you know, being a fantasy plant, who's to say that these uh, toxic pears wouldn't have those naturally? So now that we've hit step five, I'm going to add another layer of highlights. I thought that the original highlights that I had were good, but I really wanted something more. Um, this is supposed to be a toxic plant and the green was just a little too safe. So I went back to my paint kit and grabbed what is in essence neon green and I am amping up the highlights in a very specific way, as you can see here. Um, adding in selectively the neon green to the parts of the, the green areas that are um, hit by a, an overhead light, whether it's the sun or any other light source. Um, 
these are on the fly decisions that can be made during your project. It might sound good in your head, look good in a demo painting or drawing. And then as you paint it in real life, you'll see it in execution. You'll hold it up with the rest of your diorama and you'll, you'll make on the fly decisions in some cases that um, really add something special to the whole project. So um, give yourself permission to be flexible. Give yourself permission to change. It is just paint. Um, in my case, I got it from a big box store, so it's not even that expensive. I know you can buy really nice paints, but the, the goal of this particular video is to show you what can be achieved with um, just a cheap acrylic paint from, a, like I said, a, a big box store that's in many, many countries around the world. Um, someday, of course, I may do a video with more expensive actual model paints. Um, I'm sure that they are worth the money. I'm sure that they cover better, their colors are more pigmented, they're richer, um, but I'll save those videos for the experts in the field and focus on my specialty, which is uh, arts and crafts for people who are, um, you know, maybe don't want to invest a lot of money in it just yet and want to verify that it's uh, right for them, that it's a hobby that they'll stick to. So moving back to the original spot where we started the highlights, you can see that they look pretty amazing. To amp it up, to add another layer of just wow, I am doing yet another um, very, very precise, very gentle addition of highlights. These aren't covering the whole area that the previous highlights covered. It's just the top areas. And as this dries, it will dry darker and it will blend in really nicely. But by layering the paint, 
you get more and more um, opacity from the paint and that will make it look brighter. So you'll get, even though you use the same paint in multiple layers, and the, the appearance of more colors than you actually use. So you're not having to mix the paint to get additional colors. Um, so you'll see that as it dries, it just starts to look really neat. Um, I am blending it down. It's a, a dry blending. The, the only thing that's wet there is the paint that I just added. There are other techniques like wet blending. Um, I'm not demonstrating it at this particular time, but that is a search term. I'm sure if you pop it into to YouTube, you'll see it all over. Um, different miniature painting videos, so check those out if you're curious to learn more about the wet blending. Our piece is complete. Well, at least the green is complete. I think that it looks really, really amazing. It turned out super dramatic, and I wanna use those same techniques and work on the pear itself. So we remember we used a middle shade of red. Now I'm going to the spots on the top where the, the overhead light or the sun would hit it with a lighter shade of red. So that is one that is mixed with a little bit of white and it looks almost peachy right now. It will dry lighter, but um, not peach, right? It won't have the defined edges. And that's because as you see what I'm doing right there is I'm, I'm putting the paint on, but then I have very little actual paint on the brush and I'm just using a flicking motion to take that wet paint and blend it into the dry paint and it will dry darker and just add that a little bit of pizzazz a little bit well, of highlight right that was the goal to add some highlights to the piece so as you think about where the highlights hit I'm really globbing it on near the top because I want the paint to have the most intensity up at the top and then using just a flicking motion to flick it down lower on the piece where it starts to, because of the, the pear shape, the sides of the pear will have less direct light hitting them and so they will be naturally darker. Now as the pear flares out, those flared out pieces will also be lighter and so I'll use more paint there and then use the flicking motion of the brush to manipulate the paint to keep it heaviest at the top where the light is and then blend it down where of course it would naturally be a little bit darker.
I sped the rest of the video up because I think you can only watch me paint uh, highlights for so long. But what I've done is I've continued to layer on thin layers of paint to make sure I can retain control. Um, experts might use, they might make more bold color choices. Um, as you gain more experience, you can make that determination yourself. But the final piece looks amazing. So I hope you like this video. Check out my channel for other customizations for your Halloween village and fun projects to do. Thanks for stopping by.